Hello everyone, welcome back to the Daisy Regrowth Project. Um, I've been receiving your work, it's great, thank you very much. Um, uh, it's so lovely to receive the emails with your work in it and uh, you're doing such a good job so thank you for sending and thank you for taking part. Um, and uh, so today what are we going to do? Well, we have to finish um, the work that we started last week with our rubbings, our frottages. Um, and we're going to make some young trees from those rubbings. And we'll go into that a little bit later. I just wanted to talk about trees for a little while. Um, our forest, our woodlands is very new. Um, and so we're going to make these quite young trees and young trees are called um, saplings. Um, it's a lovely name and um, it's a bit like ducklings. Um, it, it, duckling is a baby duck, well a sapling is a baby tree. And I think it's because um, all trees produce something called sap. It goes from the roots right up to the very top of the tree and it's a sweet sticky um, juice that the tree needs to stay healthy and grow because it's got all of its nutrients in it and so it travels around the tree delivering the nutrients to where it needs to go um, and uh, so the trees produce this um, substance called sap and that's why we call our baby trees saplings interestingly um, we can and we do eat some of that sap from a tree that grows in Canada and in the United States called the maple tree um, do you know what I'm talking about yes it's maple syrup and we have it on our pancakes <laughs> so next time you have your pancakes with maple syrup on it you can think uh, about the beautiful maple tree. Now our woodland is new isn't it? We haven't even made it yet um, so we ha are having young trees going in it but I wanted to tell you that 2% um, of our forests in the United Kingdom are ancient forests that means that they're very very old and some of them date back to the 1600s which is 400 years ago um, and the oldest tree in the United Kingdom is uh, in Scotland a yew tree um, and that's 3,000 years old um, and uh, we have Sherwood Forest. Sherwood Forest is the largest ancient forest in Northern Europe um, and it's got oh, many, many oh, old, old oak trees in it, um, over a thousand years old some of those oak trees. Um, that's the Sherwood Forest which you've probably heard of through Robin Hood, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, so um, we're going to make our trees today and you will need those rubbings that we did last week um, and uh, I think we'd better get started. So um, you will need your stay at home um, rubbings, your frottage um, from last week and we're going to work on that. Please don't worry about spoiling it because um, I've got a photograph and I will use the photograph in the woodland in other ways but this is actually for your um, tree. First of all have a really good look at it and decide which way up you would like it so don't forget that your tree trunk is going to be in the middle um, and towards the bottom so have a look and decide which way up your page is going to go you'll need your fine liner or a felt tip pen or a pencil if you prefer 
to go uh, to draw on it in pencil first and then go over it in fine liner. I'm just going to use um, my fine liner. First thing to do is from the middle and down you will need to draw a kind of curving line. This is the side of your tree. So down it goes and then curve it around for the ground and run it along the bottom of the page, just like that. Then on the other side you're going to follow it but go in the other direction. Now give um, give it uh, you know space to be a nice size tree trunk. Bring the pen down, curve it around and take it off towards the other side. And there you've got your tree trunk and your ground. Okay. Okay, now we want to draw our first branch and I'm going to take it from this side and just wave it around. So I start with a curve, I don't want a straight line, and then I give it a little wave and take it to the side. And this one, this side, I'm just going to do just one curve. So this side's got a wave and the other side is just a curve. Okay. I'm going to go from the end of that curve and follow the line around and end it just inside the tree trunk like that. Now I'm going to take it up and do another curve. Okay, and end it just before the top. And then I'm going to follow that back down, that one. And this time I'm going to make a little sort of C shape, curl it round and then start following the first branch and end it there. Join the end up. There you go. Um, and it's three main branches because I didn't want too many branches for our young tree. I'm just going to add a couple of little ones and I'm, they're kind of like uh, just small branches to go with the design. And there we go. I just put one on each side and two on the top. And of course you can put as many as you want on. It's your tree. Okay. As you can see the textures are looking really beautiful um, and we have our actual tree shape. Now put the lid on your fine liner because otherwise it will dry up and um, I want to separate and bring the tree forward from the background and um, so I decided to use a brown crown. I've got two crowns. I've got a darker brown and a lighter brown. I've gone with a darker brown but I'm using it very, very lightly indeed. I don't want to get rid of my beautiful textures but I want the tree to kind of um, come out from the background. And already you can see it's separating from the background. The background is now looking like a wonderful landscape. Try and keep your um, pencil strokes in the same direction. I'm leaving a little bit of space there for the grass. Um, and in the end, I do put another piece of uh, another line down there, which I'll show you in a little while. But I'm just very lightly going over the whole tree, very carefully, to. Um, Try not to go outside of the lines. And if I have to turn my paper, I do, as you can see. There we go. For the other line, for the other branch.
done. Okay, and then I'm just using a green to um, do some some grass along the bottom there. Nice and lightly so that I don't lose any of the textures. Okay. Now get out the leaf rubbings that you made. I made quite a few sheets of these, so I'm going to do three different things. But for this first one, I'm going to cut out some of these large leaves. Okay, I'm going to put the other one to the side and cut out the whole leaf. Take your time. Have a really good look at your um, rubbings before you decide what you're going to do. And you might want to make a pencil line around where you're going to cut. I'm just cutting out a whole leaf and I do that three times. Um, and then I actually cut those down a little bit because they were a little bit big for it. Um, I made them a little bit rounder. Um, but as you can see, they look very nice. Alternatively, you can get um, your patterned one if you've got one. Um, this is um, the one that I did with the fern, um, and I really like it. It's got some beautiful texture on it, and I'm drawing some like clouds with my fine liner um, because these are going to be like clumps of leaves, not just individual leaves, but clumps of leaves, and they look a bit like clouds. And I'm going to put them to, on top of the branches like that. I think it's quite important to keep some of the black line because that makes it really striking. But you can always go over the edges afterwards. So I'm cutting my clouds out, popping them into place, not gluing them, I'm just arranging them, seeing what I like, what I like. Mm. Yeah, I'm going to do one more by the looks of things. Um, yes, um, something like that. That's lovely. Yeah. Now I'm going to get the glue. and start gluing them into place. Just, just, just the glue stick. I'm just going around the edges. I don't mind if the um, tree comes off of the, off of the edge of the paper a bit. I don't mind that because I can fix that when I pop it into the woodland. So if, you're, if, you're, um, if your leaves are going to come outside of the edge of the paper, that's fine. Um, and so for my last example, I have cut out from a patterned piece of paper some tiny leaves. Um, first of all, I'm just going to go around my tree with a fine line and can you see that I have actually penciled in um, blue around the tree so I've done the brown of the tree trunk and then I've uh, decided to do the background in blue and I haven't lost any of my textures I've done it very lightly but it just uh, I quite liked that and I've cut out some little leaves um, I drew them on my paper and then cut them out. And look at that, isn't that pretty? So, three examples. Um, one with little leaves cut out from my paper. Um, and uh, two clumps of leaves, like clouds cut out and three is where I've um, I've done I've made a rubbing of a big leaf and so have cut out the big leaves 
I made a bit of a design change. I wanted some fine liner to um, separate the tree trunk uh, from the grass. So I, I did a nice sort of jagged line. It's like an M shape, really. Very simple, just to show some roots of the trees, really. Um, so you start at the edge of the tree where the tree meets the ground and go up first and then down and then up and then down and join it into the ground. I did three designs but you only need to do one unless you want to do more, that's entirely up to you. But can you photograph it um, for me? and send it to um, this address um, and thanks very much for joining in I really look forward to seeing your young trees um, and I'll uh, see you next time bye <laughs>